I guess we can get started. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Rima. Um, I am overlooking the WLCU Youths NGO Commission. Um, and we are decided to start a series called the WLCU Talks, where we will invite um, NGOs that we think have been doing phenomenal work in Lebanon um, on the ground. Um, and to start, we are going to be talking with Basma. And I am joined here today. Um, by Sandra. Sandra, it's such a pleasure to have you. Um, so, to, and over the course of a few weeks, we'll be having um, other Instagram lives with um, a few other organizations. Um, but let's get started to learn more about Vesma. So, Sandra, can you um, please start, like tell us a bit about Vesma's history, how it started, um, and like what what made what made you guys like start Vesma? Uh, in fact, Basma started uh, 19 years ago in 2002 when we thought that the socioeconomic uh, conditions were very bad. We had no idea that they could be so much worse at this point, like uh, the situation we are currently living. So we started uh, 19 years ago. We were a group of friends, all volunteers, and we started with food aid. And we started distributing food packs to families in need. But we immediately realized that families need uh, to pay the tuition at school, need to find jobs, need to uh, buy medicines, to pay the rent of their houses. So to only focus on food was incomplete. And families need everything uh, uh, they need to become, at, uh, at a point, self-sufficient. and. Uh, immediately we shifted and the objective of BASMA is to help families become self-sufficient. So we help them and we, we tell them that we are here for a period of time and uh, we will help them at all levels. And that, that's why we focus on education, on employment, on professional trainings, on food aid, on health. Um, and also on youth development uh, capacities because uh, youth need to express themselves. They are sometimes very much depressed and they need help at this level. So we also um, focus on psychological health and uh, we uh, assist the elderly. Uh, uh, very often they are abandoned, they are alone, they have uh, no one to help them. So we go... Uh, in their houses uh, to visit them, to help them, to bring everything they need because they cannot go out because of illness or, or simply because they are very old. So uh, we have families at all levels and we have uh, success stories about families who were completely destitute and thanks to Basma, thanks to this comprehensive approach that we have with the families, uh, they became they became self sufficient at the, at a point. Um, it's very bad that because of the situation currently, we uh, all the families are back to point zero, if I can say, because uh, even the families who were okay before now they have issues uh, dealing with uh, the the situation, the current situation we are living in Lebanon, and that's why the. Uh, the month of May is a very important month for us because uh, we have International Day of Families on May 15. And uh, we consider that uh, it's an important day for us uh, during the year. Uh, and it means a lot for us. And that's why we have a lot of programs and activations and partnerships and collaborations during the month of May to celebrate the importance of families and how, how important it is to focus and to help families because the family is the pillar of the society and healthy families lead to healthy society. Of course. How, now, to ask, how long do you guys usually work with families? Like, do, is it only short term? Is it long term? Is it over the course of a few months or a course of uh, like a few years that you work with them? It's a very important question because every family is unique and has its own issues and problems. And therefore, our program is personalized and 
each family has its own uh, plan of action. We have uh, objectives on the short term, mid term, long term for each family. And the duration of the plan of action differs uh, from a family to another. Some families can stay with us only one year, some other three years, some other stay 10 years. So because there were many issues, because the children were very young, uh, because uh, they have uh, psychological issues. We have to treat everything uh, in parallel. We cannot, uh, you cannot find a job to someone who is uh, suffering from depression. It, it, it will not work and it's a waste of time and uh, uh, it's not going to work. So in the act plan of action, the psychological uh, follow-up comes first. So we need to help these people heal and then we can uh, go with uh, focus on professional trainings, find jobs and uh, all the plan of action that uh, that they need. Awesome. And then as I, I, I want to get into actually how many families have you helped so far? Because I know you told me the number the other day and I think it's wonderful and, and such an amazing thing like just to help this many families. So how many families have you guys helped so far? We say that uh, during the uh, 19 years, we have helped over uh, 400,000 people. And this year, we are supporting 2,000 families all over Lebanon in villages, very far villages in Baalbek, in Tripoli, in Ghalboun, in, um, uh, in the Shouf region, uh, in the south, and of course, in Beirut because uh, at the start we were mainly focusing on Beirut, but since the confinement last year, we decided to help everyone all over Lebanon because we are receiving thousands of calls every day, every single day. And we have a waiting list, endless waiting list. We are not able to, to, be, um, to take more because we help families at all levels. It's not uh, only food. It's not only education. We distribute laptops. We have online uh, tutoring. We have physical education sessions. We have anti-bullying sessions. We have psychological follow-up. Uh, it's very wide. So it's, uh, it's tough to focus on more than 2,000 families at a time. But the challenge is to be able to help them all. And this is what we really want to, to uh, achieve. So you guys are working on expanding now, correct? From what I'm getting, oh. we we hope to be able. We we really don't like to say no to anyone. People need help, and they need it desperately. Uh, so we are here to stay uh, by their side. We will do our best to uh, to try to respond to every single uh, call. That's wonderful. Um, I know I wanted to ask you this. So, you know, over the course of the few years since you guys started, what have been like the biggest challenges that you guys have faced? Since 2002, we have uh, gone through all the wars, all the difficult situations, all the uh, protests, all everything that you could imagine. Uh, so there were times it was tough uh, to manage uh, with the volunteers, uh, with the situation. You know, one time, uh, this ca came to my mind now, one time we had two buses at Christmas time of, uh, full of children and we were going to the downtown and uh, we parked and the children went of, of the buses and they were uh, coming uh, one after the other. We are going to have a, a very big and beautiful Christmas activity in one of the beautiful places in downtown. And then an explosion happened. This was in 2017, I guess. Mm -hmm. I was responsible of all the children. You cannot imagine. <laughs> What happened? How I hide, uh, hide them under the wall, under the behind the walls, and it was uh, very tough. Sometimes uh, they were very tough uh, times to manage, and also uh, the fundraising is a challenge. Every day a challenge, especially nowadays. 
because uh, we uh, used to count on corporations, on TSR activities, and now everyone, uh, uh, co uh, corporate uh, institutions are not being able to donate anymore or to participate in any kind of CSR activities. And we have a lot of challenges. The demand has increased and the donations has decreased. So this is the challenge to be able to continue and stand uh, next to all these families in need, in desperate need. Oh my God, that's like, that. that's, it's tough. I know like from personal experience, fundraising um, at any level is, it's very hard, especially now. Um, I, I can't even imagine how hard it is in the Nan, given like all the financial constraints that people have. Um, what are ways that you think, you know, we you you're able to like move in a direction where you, i guess sorry if i'm i'm trying to word this in a way you know how can do you think you can you got you're able to like overcome these financial difficulties um and how like what uh, like outside of like just like the, these certain donations do you also rely on um like donated products or food or things like this um as outside That's of just cool. like monetary Yes, sure. And the in-kind donations uh, have been uh, very helpful, uh, especially after August 4th. We, uh, we have always uh, been able to, uh, to uh, receive and distribute the, the hot meals, the food packs, the hygiene items, uh, the laptops for uh, for uh, online education. So we have a lot of in-kind donations and this is very important to families. It's not only financial donations. And um, we have received a lot of donations after four, uh, August 4. And it was very helpful. We thank every each and every sponsor, each and every person who donated, who helped, who was here, because we needed each and every person and support uh, possible. And uh, we rebuilt 500 houses, we rebuilt uh, 11 buildings, and we are still in the process of rebuilding Beirut. And, but now, uh, nine months later, we, uh, the donations have stopped, uh, and, uh, and Families, it's true that we have uh, rebuilt a lot of houses, but so many people did not come back yet to their houses, and the families are losing their jobs. Uh, meanwhile, the products are getting very uh, expensive. So I think this is the time uh, now more than ever that we need uh, that people stay next to Lebanon, next to the NGOs, next to Basma, uh, to be able to uh, to prepare, to prevent. Uh, we are coming because they might uh, uh, remove the, the subsidized product. Uh, they might uh, cancel uh, these items and uh, we don't know where are we going and uh, and families are very scared of what we, uh, is waiting for them. No, that's like, that's heart reckoning. Now, is there a way that like, you know, us be like outside, which you kind of tell you, tell you jumped into the, the um, I was going to ask you about, you know, how have you guys been doing since the August 4th explosion? And it's just remarkable to see all the work that you've done, but I, I comply, I understand it's the struggle I know now. Um, you know, the cost of lumber has gone up and everything like tenfold. There's a lot of like issues with that. So I can imagine, you know, the issues that are coming in the bin. Um, I wanted to like, to also like kind of dive in, like, is there a way like, you know, would it be beneficial for us to like us outside of the bin? Like, how can we help make a difference? You know, how can we help um, not being in the bin? Are we, you know, by sending products maybe aside from money because i know sending money to the 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 call like the dollar conversion also is a little bit tricky now um so it, it supplies the better way right now do you think or do you think still it's the monetary funding that's what's no needed? i think both both we need both because you know there's a lack of milk we have a milk issue baby milk issue in lebanon 
So we need milk, we need uh, diapers, we need baby stuff that uh, are lacking. We need uh, food and hygiene items that have become very expensive. And we also need financial donations. I will tell you why. Because sometimes with this money, you can buy from local uh, shops and from local uh, uh, um, suppliers and uh, uh, producers. And uh, you can help these producers uh, survive with this money. So you, you help the economic chain uh, continue not only uh, uh, in-kind donations. In-kind donations will help punctually, but uh, financial donations will help the economic system uh, keep on working, and especially the small producers, the agricultures, uh, the, to buy uh, local uh, productions from Lebanon. Of course, lo buying local is always like beneficial to any country, exactly. and any, especially in Lebanon, to kind of help like help steam like steamroll the economy and make it like better than what it should. Well, bring it to where it should be, um, you know. And, and encourage. We need to encourage the local production. We need to uh, encourage the agriculture. Uh, we need to encourage these uh, uh, small producers to go on. If we, if we only we bring imported products from, uh, uh, we import them and, and, and we have donations, it will not help them. It will help the families punctually, yes, but on the long term, we need to help uh, the local production. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then, like, have like, how, what are ways that you worked with like lo local youth to kind of help, like, steamroll this or help to like kind of like build upon this and get like the economy going and having them buy local and all this stuff? Have you guys like worked on like plans like that to like essentially like help the economy? Yes, sure. We always uh, we are working on an agriculture project. We uh, always have uh, trainings for youth and find jobs for them. Uh, we, ha we are always, like now we have uh, five uh, months uh, online training uh, to 20 youth on IT, English and math uh, with ANERA. Uh, and it's funded by UNICEF. And uh, these youth can find job afterwards. So. Yes, we're always uh, working and fo focusing on youth because they are the future and we need to focus on them, on education, on job uh, opportunities, on professional trainings. And uh, this is very important. And that's, and that's what it will uh, um, allow the economy to keep on uh, and uh, to keep on working. And uh, this also will allow the youth to stay in Lebanon uh, and not uh, leave uh, Lebanon to find opportunities outside Lebanon. Yeah, I know that's like, that's another major issue um, because a lot of like talented Lebanese are taking their talents elsewhere when Lebanon needs them. Um, Lebanon needs the talent, they exactly. breed the talent and like a lot of them leave. I mean, you know, obviously a lot of our, like, you know, a, like a lot of people in our organization, a lot of the youth, our families left Lebanon obviously because of the war. And it's, you know, it's kind of sad in a sense because they're all very, very talented, very educated, and it's, you know, they're they're bringing their talents elsewhere um, when the men could have benefited and, and flourished even and more. And we need them now here, but unfortunately, currently we don't have enough um, uh, cuisine or a, a field to to plant. Or we need now people uh, understood the importance of a local production and now people are uh, focusing on this and and this will allow to have a job creation and to retain the youth and to keep them in Lebanon as they are the future of Lebanon. It's not always to be an engineer or to be a doctor it's always it, it's good to go back to the roots, to go back to the field, to work uh, with what uh, can make be our asset in Lebanon. We have a lot lots of assets. We have a lot of 
treasures in Lebanon, we need to develop these sectors. No, of course. And, you know, from my experience in Lebanon, Lebanon is just, you know, full of greenery and its beauty and, and you have, like fields of produce everywhere. If you go, when you go into the valleys, um, it's just, it's remarkable. And there's so much uh, like, I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm trying to find the word for it, but there's, there's so much in Lebanon that you got the natural resources that, you know, exactly can benefit the country that you just need to like, I guess, push the collect. Um, what did I want to ask? Um, and then just to dive into, you know, how, how can us as like Lebanese abroad and like expats, like how can we make a difference? How do you think we can make a difference in the end? How do you think we can like, I guess, you know, like influence change in Lebanon while we're so far away. I think uh, you are already doing a big difference with prom you, you are promoting the Lebanese culture all over the world. And this is amazing. And you are uh, motivating the youth to come back each year to visit their countries. And this is amazing too. And now I think uh, the focus is to focus on the families, on the Lebanese families, to stay, to know what are the needs. You know that today we are facing a big problem nobody is talking about. And it has been going on for the last two years, uh, for the last 10 years, but the last two years are, um, uh, were very difficult on the housing level. We, um, we know that education is difficult. We know that food uh, is now uh, getting uh, uh, very expensive. But also, people are uh, jobless. They are unable to pay the rent of their houses. So uh, they, ha they haven't been paying the rent for more than one year. And the owners sometimes only rely on this source of income and they are not getting any. And the, 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 per, the family who, who is not being able to pay the rent also is facing a problem. So everyone is facing this uh, same problem. And uh, at some point now the owners are not reacting because they know that the, the situation is difficult. But at some point they have to live also and to survive also they need this money so at some point it's a bomb that is going to explode and we tried uh, to work with lawyers with um, with a group uh, to find solutions to find uh, uh, what could be uh, uh, the alternative for this to, to find the social housing to work and we we have a lot of recommendations but then when while we were work, working on this we had the uh, august 4 and we stopped working on this and now all families are calling they need to pay the rent of their houses so everyone without exception has this issue and i think the expat should focus on this issue uh, housing is essential of course food is essential but ngo are managing to distribute, to deliver food to all families. But rent is a major issue. I think we can have a plan with the expat to try to organize uh, and try to find solutions to this issue. <coughs> that's, like, that's, that's heartbreaking. I, we know a lot of these like a lot of people that live in a lot of the, a lot of these apartment buildings, for example, are all very old too. So that that definitely does play a role as to like why they're unable to afford to like live in their apartments anymore. I know it's like a lot. Of, it's a huge generational gap. You have families living in the same apartment for like 30, 40, 50 years and not leaving. Um, and I can't even imagine the economic struggle that everybody's been facing in the Bnan right now. Um, you know. It's, it's a vicious cycle, a circle, yeah. because they are jobless, they cannot pay the rent, the food is getting more expensive, so it's a really a vicious circle we are in. We need to try to find solution to each and every problem, and uh, expat can help at all these levels, 
food aid, hygiene items, education through laptops. We need laptops. We need tablets. Uh, uh, we need financial donation, of course, because some things you cannot uh, only manage with Inca. You need to pay the hospital. You, you need to buy the medicine. Sometimes you have issue. You have to pay in the money uh, in financial. But also we need to pay the rent, the rent for the owners to survive and for the families to stay in their houses. Yeah, that's insane. And, you know, like after the August 4th explosion, how were you guys able to like balance, you know, like dealing with the blast and then also dealing with the work that you guys have been work doing already? Like how have you guys been able to balance like the two? Did you guys shift the focus and then kind of like, put a few a few projects on the side or did you guys like manage uh just focus on what you guys were already doing because you know it's essentially a lot instead of like focusing having your focus on working with a few families now you have an influx of families that need help we i can talk about it nine nine months later I can talk about it uh, sitting on my chair and easily, but it was not uh, like that at all uh, during the past month. We had to stop some um, uh, to stop some programs for at least six months. Like we stopped everything related to education, we stopped everything related to professional trainings, to employment, and we shifted only. We focused on humanitarian help. It was food and it was reconstruction. It was two main uh, 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 big issues uh, we needed to face and uh, because it was an emergency, a crisis. Since day one, Basma was in Manukhail and Carantina from August 5 and we were on the ground. A lot of people volunteered. We received a lot of food aid. Uh, we distributed a lot. We, we started our assessment uh, with the assessment sheet. We, like overnight, we, with some architects, we designed it like at midnight. The, the, the next day we had an assessment sheet. Of course, we ameliorated with the time, but we had one at the start. We started immediately the assessment and we were focusing to rebuild the houses and help these families that lost everything at least get food and uh, these were, were the two major issues it was an emergency it was a catastrophe and it was apocalypse so now after all this these months we uh, we are uh, more uh, uh, calmer we are uh, starting to uh, we have uh, relaunched our educational programs our youth programs our psychological programs uh, employment programs we have start restarted to focus on all our programs but it took seven eight months to do to, to be able to do so yeah, that, 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 and that's a long time to like pause programs like that. But of course, it's like, you know, first response. And, you know, we are nearing the one year anniversary of the port explosion. And it's, it feels like it's been years ago that yes. it happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, to me, I'm like, oh, my God, I feel like it happened like so long ago. But it, it was yet, like basically yesterday. It's been less than a year that it, it happened. And people are still living, you know, in the struggle and still suffering and people's homes are still not built which is yes it's it's insane Nine months later and uh, we still people are still calling uh, uh, basma to help them rebuild their homes we are now in the phase of uh, distributing uh, house furniture, home appliances. Not only uh, we have rebuilt the homes, but also the curtains, uh, the couches, the beds, the closets. They have nothing. So the, the fridge, the oven. So we, uh, now we, we are in the phase of uh, distributing all these uh, donations to, to families we have uh, rebuilt their homes. How many homes have you guys rebuilt so far? 500. And uh, this week, we will start our last building. Uh, uh, it's a building uh, without, uh, completely without a facade. Uh, and people are still living inside. They have nowhere to go. Even when, when one, we want to rebuild it, 
they will go during the day and they will come back to sleep at night because they have really nowhere to go. And it's 18 uh, apartments in the building. So they're, uh, is they're, they're, they're basically living with no water or electricity or is there, that's... With no walls, with no walls, no walls. Yeah. If you can see the pictures, you, it's incredible. Oh my God, how did, how, walk, how did they... How if you walk on the street, you winter? can see them having lunch, sleeping inside the house. You can they they continue to live normally without walls. That's that's insane. That's remarkable, and it's it's sad to see uh, that they have to adapt in these conditions. It's very very sad to see that they have to adapt to these conditions because these and are it's not. It's very sad to see that nine months later, this building hasn't been done before, and there's still many buildings like that. But our our donations uh, are over. We have done uh, this is the last amount we will do this building, and we don't have uh, more. So we will stop the reconstructions. Uh, we used to renovate uh, families' homes since two thousand eight. It's not new for us, but we used to do five ten houses per year. This year. This time we, we have rebuilt 511 buildings, so it's a bit different. But now well, the donation stopped, so this would be our last building. If the donations do start coming in again, do you think you guys will resume rebuilding homes or will you still shift your focuses away? No, we will still rebuild because this is one of our programs since 2008. This is home renovations and this is, this is one of our main programs anyway. And if we have more money, of course, we would continue. The team is still at the office and uh, we would be very happy to be able to help people come back home. Of course, of course. It's always, you know, they, a lot of people need help in Lebanon. Um, and you know people have the right to live in their homes and live comfortably so it's it's nice that you guys have been doing this prior and you know the ins and outs of helping these families build their homes and you know it that's it's phenomenal you guys were able to build 511 homes in less than a year when you guys on you yeah. usually build five and, or six when that's you see, when you rebuild, it's not only the window or the door we have rebuilt everything because the walls were all cracked there were cracks everywhere. It was dangerous. Homes could fall apart uh, at the time. It was a very a dangerous uh, situation. So we needed to redo the walls, the ceilings, uh, the floors, uh, the, uh, everything in the houses, were, were, everything was destroyed. So when I say 500 houses, it's not only uh, front door and windows. It's all the, the home. Yeah, and, and that itself cost an, an impeccable amount of money um how long did it did it usually take you to like rebuild each home like was it only like a, a few weeks or a month like how, what was the the time like that it usually took from the start like start to finish uh in fact uh, it depends on the homes because some were very small and some were bigger but uh, usually uh we used to do like up to like each 10 days, uh, 10 homes per contractor. We had four or five or six contractors in parallel. So we could manage to work in parallel with many contractors to achieve uh, the, the, this number. And what was the biggest challenge, like, you know, what, what was the biggest success that you had with managing all this? Because going from a few, a few to hundreds, yeah. Is you know like what what made what made it click that okay we're gonna do we're gonna get these these all done and this is how we're gonna move forward was it just because from experience and you're you guys just could put everything like uh, did everything quicker or you know did you learn did you learn a lot along the way and were able to do experience, it in a more efficient our experience helped and thank you for the question this is a very uh, important question for me because. <laughs> <laughs> because the fr uh, to, to say it frankly it was a very tiring because we needed you know you need to uh, hire the team to get the CVs 
have a new team of architect and engineer. You don't know from day one, you don't know a whole big team to, to manage. They don't know each other and we have to achieve a, a, a target together and uh, in, a, in a timely uh, manner. And it was, uh, and to discover the, the contractors, some of them were okay, some of them were very slow, some of them were not very honest. And we need to, to have this, uh, this selection, to have the CVs, to make the team, and to, to have the organigram, the organization chart of this project, and uh, to have the processes to send reports to the sponsors, to have portfolios of the house to be ready to send them to any uh, potential donor, uh, to do all in a timely manner uh, was um, was it was uh, very stressful and uh, very um, for me it was um, very uh, how I say it it was a very difficult uh, moment for me personally. But now when I look back, I'm proud of the team, of the achievements, of the processes. All the sponsors say, wow, you, you, you are so fast. You give them figures. The, the reporting are so well done. Uh, the voucher, the receipts are so well organized. So now after all this um, stress and very difficult period to all of us, I'm proud and happy that we could achieve it. No, of course, that's definitely something to be proud about. I'm sitting here being like, oh my God, you are, you guys are amazing for having to, been able to accomplish such a thing. Like it's, you know, you, nobody knows their true strength until they're being tested. So you guys definitely were, were tested and you guys figured out your strength. So it's exactly. definitely remarkable to see. Um, I do want to also give a space like for anybody that's on the call that wants to ask questions. So if anybody has questions, please be sure to put them in the chat. Um, and we'll, we'll be sure to answer them in the last like 10 minutes. I'll try to light the light, the, put oh, the light on. The power. <laughs> Very Welcome to Lebanon. <laughs> oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Better, no? Yes. <laughs> well, like I can see it. Let me look back to see if anybody has asked any questions. I wish I could. We have a lot of people joining. Put my vote down. Um, I do, I know, I know we've like spoken for like 40 minutes, uh, but I do want to give you guys like, you know, the space to also like, you know, like let us know. Oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> Najib, sorry, I'm like reading the notes. Um, it's always a struggle with the electricity in Lebanon. Um, so I just want to say like, thank you so much for, you, you know, being on this call with us. I really, really appreciate it. It was wonderful having you. Um, is there like one final note that you want to leave us with? Um, just like to, you know, kind of like give us some advice of like how to help and ways that we can help. And also I will note that we, like whoever's watching, we will be sharing um, the link to BESMA so you guys can find out even more information and see their wonderful projects um, on our um, page. So be sure to check it out. Um, so Sandra, is there anything else that you want to leave us off with? I want to leave on a note of uh, hope to give uh, hope. I am, I am a very optimistic person. I always uh, believe uh, that, that things will get better at a point. <laughs> and uh, it's been 19 years that you are struggling. It's true that it's now one of the most difficult uh, period and challenge we are going through. But I believe that with so uh, uh, good-hearted people everywhere in the world and Lebanese standing next to us, uh, during this difficult period, we will make it. We will stand next to families in need. We will try our best uh, to solve all the problems in education, to try to give them all they need, education, food, uh, housing, um, and uh, especially hope and uh, throw a smile on their faces and uh, give back the smile on the faces because they lost it at the point. 
and uh, we really count on you all on the diaspora. Uh, you are um, uh, essential uh, during your role is essential uh, during this phase, and uh, your uh, support your um, support counts a lot uh, during this time and thank you for giving me the space to express all the issues of the Lebanese and to make their voice heard everywhere in the world. Of course this is what we're here for us as all Lebanese like abroad and expats like you know it's, but within our organization we're all over the world and we still we love Lebanon with all our heart or we wouldn't be part of this we wouldn't be focusing on Lebanon as much um I did want to quickly ask you before we um end the call um you know are there ways that we can that people can fund particular projects or or anything or like they, it would just go straight to you guys and you guys would <laughs> distribute the dollars no, sure. They can pick. They can choose to sponsor education, sponsor hot meals. You know, we uh, our smile restaurant. I didn't talk about our programs uh, much. Our smile restaurant. Uh, we have founded it in two thousand four, and we had many in Beirut. But now we're focusing on one. We open seven days a week. We distribute oh. up to one hundred thousand hot meals per year to families in need all over uh, Lebanon. We distribute 30,000 uh, food packs and uh, food items and hygiene items. Uh, so uh, we have our van, delivery van, who goes to find elderly and sick people uh, in their own homes. We distribute uh, hot meals, cooked meals, uh, bread, water, bottles, everything they might need because really they cannot access to this. And we try our best so people, yes, can choose to uh, finance uh, the program uh, they want. Uh, reconstruction, um, uh, employment, uh, education, food aid, it's up to each one. And some, some can give freely and we can manage because we have always emergencies. People, uh, we paid uh, someone who wanted to make uh, an adur for his uh, small girl. It, it cost 500,000 Lebanese lira. He didn't have, we pay it. So like this, we pay all the time, um, like uh, amounts. We have ev every day 100 emergency, 100 emergency uh, for the eyes, for the people uh, need to go to hospital to make an uh, exam, etc. So... Yes, we need uh, also financial uh, donation. It's remarkable. It's really amazing. Everything that you guys do, it, you guys are like a one-stop shop for everything. And I, lo I love that, uh, you know, because it, like you said, there you can't just focus on one thing. There's so many other factors that you need to focus exactly. on and pay attention to, to be like, to act, like fully help somebody. Um, but it was such a great pleasure to have you. And we're going to share all the other projects that you guys have um, on like on our page. And we'll do a little um, follow-up post, um, providing a little bit of more information for everybody. Um, and, of course, this will be saved on the WLCU's uh, youth page. And I think you're able to share, save it on yours. So if anybody wants yes. to find out any more information um, yes. or if they miss this call, they'll be able to watch it as well. For more information on BASMA, they can visit our website, www.basma.org. We have all our programs and, of course, our Insta page and our uh, Facebook page that is BASMA, B-A-S-S-M-A, -S -S capital letter on Facebook, and on Insta, BASMA LB. Thank you so much. I, Thank you. I really appreciate it. Great discussion. No, of Thank course. You. Thank you for oh, taking time out of your Saturday to come talk with us. I really, that's like, you know, it's, it's really pleasure. nice. It's a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.